Greetings. Today we present an exceptional opportunity for you to consider. We cordially invite you to embark on a profound journey, a transition toward spiritual enlightenment that could reshape your understanding of the world. In this video you will hear a passage titled, Reciprocity of Shadows, from the book The Journey Begins Within, by Savvy. Together these teachings emphasize the importance of unexpected guidance, surrendering to the divine, practicing gratitude and acceptance, emotional healing, listening to spiritual messages, understanding purpose, and trusting in divine timing for a fulfilling and transformative spiritual journey. In this video you will learn 1. Unexpected Guidance The divine often sends unexpected messengers and events to guide us on our spiritual journey, especially when we are not actively seeking them. 2. Surrender to the divine Letting go of personal aspirations and surrendering to the divine's guidance can lead to profound spiritual growth and understanding. 3. Gratitude and Acceptance Being grateful for all experiences, even the challenging ones, is essential for spiritual development and creating a positive, abundant life. 4. Emotional Healing and Self-Worth Encounters with others can facilitate emotional healing and help restore our self-worth, especially after traumatic experiences. 5. Listening to Spiritual Messages Paying attention to spiritual messages and signs can provide clarity and direction in our lives. 6. Purpose and Meaning Understanding that our life's journey has a greater purpose and that every experience is an opportunity for growth and learning. 7. Divine Timing and Trust Trusting in divine timing and allowing life to unfold naturally can lead to profound realizations and spiritual awakenings. I hope you enjoy it. See the video description for additional details. Reciprocity of Shadows The Persistent Mystery of the Ever-Present Magic by now, we have already tacitly implied that my life has been anything but an everyday affair, albeit all efforts were made to try to slip into the shadows of existence and remain within the commonality of mundane life, the unexpected continued showing up. The longer I would turn my attention away from the inexplicable events calling my attention to a conscious communion with the divine forces at play, the harder the knocking on the doors of my life would become. Right after the events I related to in a prior chapter, right past my 41st birthday, my real awakening began, which I would like to point to. In those days I had placed my condo for sale and awaited a complete departure from South Beach. I enjoyed running five miles from my home to South Point Park and back every other day. One day in April... I wasn't feeling inclined as my depression had kicked in due to the severity of the divorce and the lack of financial resources, so I decided to ride my nice BMW motorcycle to the beach instead and parked by the SLS Hotel at the end of 17th Street. When I arrived, I noticed two ladies doing a photo shoot, one of whom was in a bikini and the other being the photographer. Right as I was walking away, one approached me and asked if they could use my motorcycle as a prop for their pictures, to which I agreed and left them to their affairs while I went for a walk on the sand by the ocean. Having just recently been able to free myself from the most pervasive of emotionally abusive relationships I had ever endured, the last priority in my mind was to establish another romantic relationship with a woman. I needed to find my bearings and heal to somehow pull through the misery of the circumstances and prevail. Hence, I did not even think about flirting, let alone establishing a conversation. But it's funny. The less you seek, the more things tend to find you. After my three-mile walk, to my astonishment, both ladies were patiently waiting for me upon my return. The model, who was the subject of the pictures, came towards me and said, "'I've been waiting for you for over an hour. Here's my card.' Please call me. I have something to tell you. I looked at her with total disdain as I noticed she was also from Venezuela due to her accent, and my ex-wife, who was making my life a living hell at that time, was also Venezuelan. So my broken life, heart, and spirit were almost having an allergic reaction. I stood still. I did not know what to answer. My awareness was called to a huge scar which I had not noticed on her until now. I won't delve into the details, but I realized that the person who was in front of me had undergone an excruciating surgery of sorts, and my empathy kicked in. I thanked her for the card, told her I would consider it, and rode my motorcycle away. 
The irony is that at that moment, this woman was sent to return to me what the other had taken away, my self-worth. But what are the odds of choosing two similar tools to do the exact opposite of one another? It was a sign I would later understand as my integration into higher planes of existence occurred. A month had passed, and I had not called her yet. Her business card sat there on my desk. While I overlooked the bay's water, I pondered my life situation while desperately working on real estate deals to solve my financial and divorce situations. I just wanted everything to be over, to sell my belongings, and go backpacking. At that point, I couldn't care less about remaining within the confines of my life. But one morning... When nothing else was happening, something within me made me stare at her card for a long time. I finally picked up the phone and called her. She knew who I was and told me she had been expecting my call all this time and I must see her immediately. I mentioned that I was going through a rough patch and could only invite her for coffee. She responded that she knew more about me than I could imagine and was inviting me. We agreed to meet at 3 p.m. at Books and Books in Coral Gables. As I arrived at our appointment, I was greeted by the cafe owner, who brought just about everything on the menu. This was the second banquet to which I had been treated in the past 30 days, somehow without me asking for it, in my honor. The prior one happened through another dear spiritual friend living in Vegas at the time, and I went to visit right after the ordeal during my birthday the previous month. Anyhow, I digress, but I want you to understand that the divine will somehow work things out in your favor once you come on board, no matter how hard the circumstances may get. Remember that the king of this world is not the king in heaven, and your life will undoubtedly become shambles more than once. Moving on, this lady proceeded to greet me, requested that I eat something first, and then asked me to pay close attention to what she was about to tell me with an open mind. I won't go into all the details, as they are irrelevant, but, like the bodybuilder event, she told me that God had spoken that day in front of the SLS hotel. She received what I like to call now a download, which involves transferring a certain amount of awareness to the forefront of our consciousness, both in terms of information and applied knowledge pertinent to the circumstances we are experiencing. It always comes from divine precedence, and during her encounter, our Heavenly Father requested that she share a large amount of information about me that was not publicly available online and pertinent to my life's journey, so she could establish credibility with me. After establishing this credibility, she delivered the following message. Tell him that I am very upset for him being so ungrateful for everything I have given him, and that I am expecting him to return to me. Remember this, as it is one of the keys to accessing the kingdom we have been told about for the past 2,000 years. If you want the ability to conjure the miraculous, it all starts by being grateful, even for the worst circumstances. A true master understands that everything is an illusion, and our natural state of being is one with the divine. No matter what we experience, gratitude for the lesson or the opportunity ahead is the key to watering the garden and creating an oasis in the middle of the desert. Back to that day. I didn't know what my face looked like as I was eating and almost choked. Indeed, I was upset with God. After having chosen to embody light and turned away from every single one of my life's material aspirations while doing good for others, I found myself in the current predicament. Little did I know then or understand the fabric of life and its purpose or how the universe conspires for our benefit and growth. Again, we can't attain any lasting gifts if not by self-realization of what we seek outside of us within. As such, I couldn't comprehend then that God was granting these and many other opportunities for my growth while keeping a watchful eye on me in the playground of life. His allowance of dire circumstances was not an oversight, but intended, so I would willingly renounce my ego aspirations and turn my focus to my spiritual journey. Being extremely stubborn then, I was determined to remain self-sufficient, severed from the divine bounty waiting for me if I would just let go. All the signs were there 
pointing to the necessary clues of the teaching. But over eleven years ago, I was still utterly asleep at the helm of my life. Little did I understand the concepts I have shared throughout this book, and frankly, being of service to everyone whom my words reach is the driving force of this enormous endeavor to share the greatness of the Spirit that resides within each one of us. If we allow ourselves to live in communion with our Heavenly Father, our life takes an entirely different meaning and path, a path certainly less traveled, but one full of abundance and enriching circumstances. Regarding messengers, now we must jump forward in the timeline approximately six to seven years and skip other events for now. However, in this chapter, I want to share a continuation of how the divine will send messengers for us to connect back. So I had gone through my dark night of the soul during which I experienced the most painful of emotional losses. Then I had lost the love of my life and her three children. I was recomposing my life, and to heal, I went on a dating app, which was an adventure of its own. I could write a whole book about the perils of men in online dating and Southeast Florida, but I will keep it family-friendly here. During one of these dates, I met a very interesting petite woman from a family of Mexican descent. We had an incredible connection, and I was extremely drawn to her in more ways than one. I sensed we had unbelievable chemistry, but by then, I had begun my awakening and my integrity would not allow me to embark on a relationship if from the onset there was a red flag or something which called me away from my chosen lifestyle. Additionally, I wasn't open to the meaningless exchanges and desired to find true connections. So after only one date, I turned her down the following week after careful introspection. Let's say she was upset with my transparency and honest reasons, and she hung up the phone. Months had gone by when one afternoon my phone kept ringing off the hook on a Friday while I was on another call. Of course, I was on a business conference call so that I couldn't pick up, but the unknown number was relentless. At one point, I got an SMS stating, Please pick up. It is me. So sorry I have been a bitch to you. I have something of extreme importance to tell you. I responded, Sorry, I am on a call. I will get back to you shortly, which I did. When I called, she told me that the day before, while attending a Mass in her church and during the reading of a passage from the New Testament book by my patron, St. James, God spoke to her and told her to call me immediately and that I should come with her and her whole family to Mass on Sunday. She had to summon the courage to call me for the past 24 hours because she didn't even know if I would believe her. As you know, these occurrences were not uncommon in my life, so I put her at ease letting her know that such events had happened already, and I was happy to comply. Sunday came, and there I was, sitting next to her and all her family at a church north of the Fort Lauderdale airport of a denomination I had never heard of before. Again, I stopped going to church long ago, as after all the apparitions, revelations, and direct one-on-one -on -one interactions with the Holy Spirit and our Heavenly Father, there was nothing else I needed there. During the Mass, the pastor read two passages that were almost direct answers to existential life questions I had at the time. When I thought everything that I had come to receive was provided, I proceeded to say goodbye and prepared to leave the church. To my disbelief, she said, Wait! Don't go! You still haven't received what you came here for! She pointed to an older woman waiting at the side of our area, instructed me to sit by this lady's side, and said she had a message for me. Curious, as always, about the supernatural, I decided to comply. I won't provide many details because what was revealed to me that morning was a prophecy of what would come to pass over the following years, along with what is already passing and what will still come for me. The Spirit channeled through this woman new intimate details of my life that not even my parents could have guessed. To establish credibility, it ensured I was paying attention and took the matter seriously. By the end of the channel, I was sobbing uncontrollably, both tears of joy and of acknowledgement that I wasn't going crazy and that indeed my whole life's journey had a greater purpose than what my little mind could understand then and there. So once again, Spirit was showing me the way through the storms of life, and all I needed to do was to let go and surrender 
Be grateful for every circumstance and keep showing up and allowing with blind conviction to be guided by it through my every next step. The whole point of this chapter is to shed light on the help awaiting us if we turn away from our ways and allow ourselves to be guided. You need a noble, open, loving heart to overcome the lower levels of awareness and enter higher levels of understanding. You may not perceive perfection within the circumstances at this very moment, but then again, this is exactly the point in life's journey design. Let go, allow, and flow. If the content moves you, we invite you to embark on your journey by purchasing a copy of the book at Amazon, Kindle, or iBook today. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, keep exploring. The journey begins within. Click like and subscribe for additional details. See the video description.